guys welcome we will continue our video lecture series on the physiology of nervous system today we will discuss about the meninges meninges are the outermost covering of central nervous system it protect our brain and spinal cord from damages basically it is made up of collagen and fibrils our meninges is the covering of central nervous system the brain and spinal cord and it has three covering layers the first one is pia mater second is our arachnoid mater and third is our dura mater as we can see in the diagram the innermost layer is called pia mater and the outer to the pia mater is called arachnoid mater and the outermost and the toughest one is called the dura mater the innermost layer of central nervous system pia mater is made up of soft connective tissues and it is vascular while the outermost layer dura mater is tough and strong it is also made up of connective tissues now we will discuss each layer separately first outermost layer of central nervous system that is dura mater its characteristics are it is hard in nature and it is inflexible and it is the outermost part of central nervous system and it is closest to the skull it is made up of loosely arranged fibroelastic layer and it have no extracellular collagen that's what it make hard further dura mater is divided into two layers one is our periosteal dura and second is our meningeal dura also we have two folds of dura mater first is flex that separate our right and left hemisphere of the brain and the second is our tentorium which separate the cerebrum from the cerebellum dura mater form several structure that separate the cranial cavity into compartment and protect the brain from the displacement the flex cerebri separate the hemispheres of the cerebrum and also the flex cerebri separates the loops of the cerebellum the tentorum cerebri separates the cerebrum from the cerebellum and one of the most important function of dura mater is it forms the several vein like sinuses that carry the blood which has already given in supply of oxygen and the nutrients to the brain back to the heart inside of our dura mater we have our arachnoid mater which is our middle membrane and it is thin it is made up of flat elastic tissue and it is impermeable to fluids it is very selective for the transfer of materials and it also project into the sinus and this projection is called the arachnoid granulation or arachnoid villi and the space between this arachnoid mater and our pia mater is called subarachnoid space it is very important space because all the blood vessels and the cranial nerves passes through it and the function of our arachnoid mater is the transfer of cerebral spinal fluid from the ventricles back to the blood stream pia mater is the innermost layer of the central nervous system which protect and stabilize the brain and spinal cord and if we talk about different spaces in the in the central nervous system these spaces are really important because we have to differentiate these spaces during any pathological conditions we will see different spaces here first we have epidural space it is located within the vertebral column for within the foramen magnum to the sacral hiatus and the subdural space is basically it is a potential space it creates due to any trauma and next is our subarachnoid space the subarachnoid space is the space between arachnoid mater and the pia mater its function is to provide the nutrients and they remove the waste it helps into support and stabilize the brain and now we will discuss about the hemorrhages basically hemorrhages is the bleeding or the blood loss now we are studying the central nervous system we will discuss about the central nervous system hemorrhages hemorrhages the reason of hemorrhages can be stroke or any vessel rupture or any traumatic injury we have four kind of hemorrhages in the central nervous system the epidural hemorrhage subdural hemorrhage subarachnoid hemorrhage and intracerebellar hemorrhage 
as we can see the name is suggesting where this hemorrhage occurred we studied species now we will discuss the hemorrhages first is our epidural hemorrhage this epidural hemorrhage occur in the epidural space it is due to the rupture of the vessel specifically in the dural sinus the reason of epidural hemorrhage is our trauma injury of our temporal bone which accumulation of blood between the skull and dura mater next our subdural hemorrhage it is due to damage of the bridging vein rupture due to the sudden accumulation the subdural uh, hemorrhage can be occur due to sudden deceleration for example if someone is traveling in a car suddenly uh, accident occurred our brain remain in our same same part but our uh, skull moves toward the brain that is called the sudden deceleration which call the which causes the injury that is our subdural hemorrhage subarachnoid hemorrhage subarachnoid hemorrhage is due to the baby aneurysm for example the abnormal irreversible uh, dilation of our vessels and lastly we have intracerebral hemorrhage the intracerebral hemorrhage is due to the damage of arteries there can be different reasons for example it can be congenital abnormal development uh, also it can be due to abnormal pressure arteries ruptured and there can be any trauma thanks guys for watching and i want to thank you guys because today we reach our first 1000 subscriber thank you so much